Hi there, in today's session we're going to look at independent samples t-test within the SPSS um, package. Specifically, this webcast aims to do the following. What you'll be able to do by the end of it is run an independent samples t-test in SPSS on your own data. Uh, some of the stuff that we're also going to cover is looking at the assumptions uh, of independent samples t-test, of which there's a couple that need to be uh, uh, validated before we can go on with the test. We also will look at interpreting the results in line with what we've pre-stated as our hypothesis. So we use SPSS to uh, set hypotheses and uh, either accept or reject them. And we're going to look at how that can be done in practice. So what is an independent samples t-test as a kind of refresher? What it essentially does is compares two groups, so group one and group two, across a continuous variable. Now that might be uh, customer satisfaction, customer loyalty, it might be age, it might be uh, income, it might be height, but it has to be continuous, i.e. interval ratio. And what we're essentially doing is assessing whether the difference, where we observe the difference, whether that difference is real, significant, or whether it's due to chance, like sampling error or something similar to that. Okay, this is what it kind of looks like graphically. So if we've got uh, a histogram um, uh, based on people's age, and this is our overall sample, and it's uh, normally distributed, we can have a, uh, and there's a mean of say, let's say an arbitrary mean of 50 there, um, uh, we might have two further subsamples. So there was our main sample. That might break into two subsamples, i.e., two groups, which look a little bit like this perhaps men and women. If men are significantly different to women, we're basically comparing whether the difference between these two means is significant or not. What we do require here is that our variance is similar between our two groups. What we essentially do is we compare the standard deviation of one group and use that in our calculations. So if it isn't, we uh, violate one of our assumptions. So what do we need for an independent samples t-test to be successful? As I've already mentioned, we need one categorical variable with two categories, maybe male or female, and then we need a continuous interval or ratio level variable. It assumes, as before, that it comes from a random sample, that we've got an adequate sample size. We say a minimum of about 50, in my opinion. Uh, some people say 30. Uh, we require a normal distribution of the continuous curve. Because it's a parametric test, t-test assumes that we have got normally distributed data. So we need to test that in advance of running any analysis. We also have to make sure that both groups share a comparable variance, i.e., breaking this down, the standard deviation from the mean is similar between the two groups. Okay, Don't worry if it isn't. That's something that we, we test actually when we run the analysis. All that we have to do in SPSS, because it's a brilliant program, what it does is it spits out another value for us uh, and we take an alternative where uh, the variances aren't assumed to be equal and it gives us an alternatively good uh, statistic for the t value. Okay, but it's something we do have to check. Check. So our data, our, um, our example comes from the OCGS dataset, and what we want to see is whether uh, Tesco or Sainsbury shoppers are older than the other. Okay, it's quite an important thing to look at um, because Tesco and Sainsbury's have different um, place strategies, so they are located in different areas, and uh, it's important to see whether. Um, people are able to go to Tesco in older age or Sainsbury's in older age and they make a choice based on that. So if there's a difference between them, that suggests that there's some uh, something more sinister going on. We're going to use question one, which is store, um, where we break down Tesco and Sainsbury's, and question eight, which is age. Uh, we're going to look at the null hypothesis that there is no difference in the age of Tesco and Sainsbury shoppers and see whether that's validated uh, or whether we have to reject it. 
Uh, the alternative hypothesis H1 is that there is a difference in the age of Tesco's and Sainsbury's shoppers. Okay then, so if we open up our data set as we've got here in front of us, um, what we're trying to check is whether uh, question one, Tesco and Sainsbury's, and I'm just going to notice here that one is Tesco and two is Sainsbury's, uh, differs uh, in the age, question eight, of its customers. So is age different between uh, Tesco and Sainsbury's customers? Okay. Um, in the first instance, though, we have to check for uh, normality. We want to see if our histogram suggests that our age variable is actually normally distributed. For this, we go to graphs and chart builder. Sometimes it will give us this box here, we just click OK, and it will open up the chart builder um, add-on. Now, this gives us all the different types of charts that we can build. We're interested in this instance in choosing histogram, and it gives us four different choices. We just want a basic, simple histogram, so we pick it up and drop it in the box. We're also interested in looking at whether this histogram differs uh, across age range. So we select age and we drop that in the x-axis. It starts to build our histogram within the actual preview pane. Um, what we probably should do is add a normal curve to this, apply that, and there's so many things that you can do by uh, editing the, the properties of the actual um, graph, the chart, sorry. Click apply, and if we click OK, Okay, we can see here that actually, yeah, we're a bit off at the lower end, 50 to 60, but that's because people uh, were set a minimum of being 60 years old to take the survey. Other than that, people are fairly well distributed with less people at the ends, the tails, uh, and that's what we would expect. Okay, so that suggests to me that actually an independent sample t-test is appropriate, um, at least for the normality assumption to be verified. We need to click Analyze and then Compare Means. And what we're interested in doing is running an independent samples t-test. So we click here. We have a test variable box and a grouping variables box. The test variable is what we want to test our groups against. In this instance, that's age. So we select age and move it across. Our grouping variable is our categorical variable, uh, in this case, store. So we click that and we move it into the grouping variable box. You'll see that there's two question marks automatically. And what we have to do is assign values to those uh, categories. We know that one is Tesco, so group one is going to become one. And we know that group two is Sainsbury's. We click continue. We actually have everything we need now to run the analysis. So we can click OK. OK, so in the first instance, we're given these two tables. OK, now it gives us the mean and gives us the number of people who have taken the survey. You can see that 125 people in the survey shop at Tesco and 106 people in the same uh, survey shop at Sainsbury's, making a total of 231 people in the overall sample. Their mean scores are 71.1520, so 71 years old for Tesco's, and 71 years old roughly for Sainsbury's. That suggests that there really isn't much of a difference between Tesco's and Sainsbury's shoppers in age. Standard deviation doesn't, um, doesn't deviate either very much. And remember that standard deviation squared is variance. So to say that there's not really too much variance between the two groups, but we need to go and test that properly. Now, the second table, remember that that's one of the assumptions of uh, t-test that we have a uh, two groups of equal variance. Uh, Levine's test for equality of variance is actually brilliant because it does that for us. And essentially we're testing the null hypothesis that there is no significant difference between our um, two groups. Okay. 
Okay, so the F statistic tells us uh, it's a value of 0.11, and that's significant at 0.739. Now, contrary to what we've done in the past, where something significant is 0.05, and that's exactly the same here, what we're wanting to do in this instance is accept our null hypothesis. Accepting our null hypothesis that there is no equal variance, that sorry, that there is equal variance between our two groups. Okay? If there isn't, and this is 0.05 or lower, this value here, we have to take the second line of statistics, which is equal variances not assumed. However, because we are accepting our null hypothesis that the Levine's test for equality of variance is um, going to be equal, we can read across the front top line, which is our t-value is 0.065, with 229 degrees of freedom and a significance value of 0.95. That actually says to us that there is no significant difference between our two uh, groups, Tesco and Sainsbury's, with regard to age. In fact, we are very, very sure that any differences we observe are just due to chance and not due to some other underlying factor that we need to explore more. So in this instance, we have to take our overall hypothesis and accept our null hypothesis, which is that we don't have any significance in age between our two supermarkets, Tesco's and Sainsbury's.